Hey guys, welcome back to Sky Factor 3. All right, that was uh, unexpected. Let me take care of these little creepers here. All right, we're just going to jump right in because <laughs> these creepers want to play. All right, so <laughs> welcome back to Sky Factory 3. I'm Haley, uh, in case you didn't already know. And uh, we're still in blood magic, but I wanted to um, use this episode to kind of explain my little setup here. So uh, we, I did a bonus episode talking about the Tartaric Gems. I still think I'm pronouncing that wrong, but um, so we've advanced quite a bit in blood magic. And I wanted to talk about my setup. Um, I've made some changes that you can see. There's a lot of equipment here. So let me kind of just walk you through that. Uh, I talked about when I was setting it up, how I have these drums on either side, and that's to pull out uh, any excess blood that's in the altar, because as you know, okay, <laughs> as you know, when you kill the mobs, the altar kind of fills up pretty quickly. So I've set up these drums uh, to kind of just recycle the blood, but uh, I'm using liquid monitors to kind of to designate how much blood I actually want to flow out. So I've got two liquid monitors here that are made from, good grief, this is going so well. They're made from RF tools. So let me just show you the recipe for that. Liquid monitors. They're really easy to make. They just take two buckets, a machine frame, and two redstone torches. The machine frame is made from just some iron, some lapis, and some gold nuggets. So I've got two of those. And each one of these are reading, that's Okay, over there. They're reading uh, the blood altar currently. So I've got, um, and my settings are not perfect by any means. I probably will adjust them over time, but it's just something just to kind of get things moving. So right now I've got it set up where if the blood altar has more than, it's more than 90% full, it, um, it sends a signal to our, um, our doohickey, <laughs> our uh, fluid conduit uh, to extract. So once it's actually 90% full, it will, it will start pulling out, um, pulling out blood. So you can see now it's pulling out blood there, but I'll only pull it out once it's 90% full. So once it's 90% full, it'll start cycling the blood out. Probably will increase that a little bit because I want it to... Uh, uh, my mobs are spawning so frequently on the cursed earth there that I might pull it out a little bit more. So um, it'll come into this drum here and it's just a, a small amount. And right now the way that the blood altar is set up that it only pulls out uh, a certain amount of fluid per tick. So you can increase the amount of fluids per tick by using the, uh, was it the rune of capacity? No, not the rune of sacrifice. <laughs> Here we go. The displacement runes. So the displacement runes will increase the amount of blood that comes out. Let's see if it says it here. I don't have to go into the book. Now it doesn't say it there and I don't have my book on me. But uh, initially it starts out at 20 per tick and I think each rune I increase it by an additional 20% per tick. So mine's coming out at a pretty decent speed. Um, see if I can get it up to 90% see how much is flowing through here uh, so it's like 500 it looks like it's coming out uh, pretty quickly I don't think I'm getting 500 per tick but anyway all right so then I've got it then I've got these um, these interfluent conduits which pulls out pretty much everything almost I think the interfluent conduits they change out fluid conduits um, 200 millibucks per tick I think that's right yeah uh, whereas the regular conduits only pull out 50 millibuckets per uh, tick so um, I've got even like that these only pull out uh, oh I actually probably can increase how much it's pulling out here I don't know I'll work on that later um, but it's pulling out all that blood and it's just recycling it to this drum here now this drum is uh, being uh, monitored not this drum but <laughs> well actually this fluid conduit here also has a redstone signal and will extract only when the blood altar is less than 70%. So uh, like I said, I can adjust those numbers however I want, but it's kind of um, just cycling the blood out <coughs> through the blood, blood altar. So the blood altar really never has uh, less than 70% in it um, because we'll talk about uh, if I wanted to cycle through um, increasing the amount of blood or decreasing the amount of blood that's flowing through here. So that setup is just something that I've used, but it's also used to monitor uh, how much blood I need in the altar to automate runes. Now, 
I don't know if this was an achievement or anything, but I set up um, the, a kind of a chest system here where if I wanted to make um, runes, automatically I can just put my runes in this chest here. They would feed into the blood altar and once they reach either level one, level two, whatever I'm designating, they'll extract into this chest over here. And I'm going to show you how that works on this step. Okay, <laughs> let me get away from the ender tank here. So we'll come into this chest here. Um, so the way this is set up, and um, in I think it's extra utilities two, you see there's an item here called a transfer filter. So this transfer pipe will pull out a stack at a time, but you know for the blood altar you can only put in one item at a time. As far as I know, I don't think you can transfer a whole stack. Maybe you can, but. Um, I'm just got it set up here to transfer one item at a time. You can set it up to do a single stack. You can have it pull as much as it wants to, or you can have it set up to do a single item. Let me show you the recipe for a transfer filter. Uh, there it is. It's from Extra Utilities 2. It's really cool. I don't know if there's anything like this um, in the older versions, but this was really, really helpful. It's easy to make. It just takes an item filter, which is some sticks, some redstone, and a piece of string. And then we need a couple of pieces of stone, two more pieces of redstone, and a transfer pipe. And that'll give you four of the transfer um the transfer filters so you just put that on the end of your transfer pipe and it'll filter how much it actually pulls out so let me go over here and grab some stone real quick let me just show you how this whole setup works let's see I should have stone there we go I've got a whole stack of stone here so let's just say I wanted to make a stack of runes or several stack of individual runes. The way I would do that is on my item filter here that's pulling out, uh, I've got, not my item filter, my transfer, uh, my item conduit here, I've got a transfer filter, an item filter in here that I can set to only pull out certain items. So I want to, let me go ahead and turn this off for a second. Let me just put a redstone signal on that. And let's just say I wanted to make a level one uh, doohickey. Uh, so I want to go ahead and make one of those. Let me kill these guys here. Uh, let's see. Come on, guys, get out of the way. I need to, I need to monitor this. Okay, so we've got our come on, good grief creeper. Can I grab it? There we go. All right, so I've got a blank slate here. So uh, if I wanted to. I can go ahead and say that I want it to pull out blank slates whenever they get made here. So I'm going to put a stack in in this chest on this side, stack of stone. And I should just do half a stack because I want to show you particularly how this works. So we're going to, so it already pulled one item in here and it's going to go ahead and convert it over. So it's using the blood and as soon as it reaches, um, as soon as it turns into a rune, which we just did here, it pops it over into our chest over here. So we have pretty much automated blank slate. Um, and again, the blood recycling through here really helps because as soon as this reaches 70%, it'll start pulling in more blood on this side. Because um, I'm just kind of killing mobs here because there's so many of them in the way. So I think you guys get the concept of that one. See, we've already got two rooms over here. Now let's say I wanted to, let me take this um, stone out of here. I think it's going to be sitting in the filter. Yeah. Okay. Now let's just say I wanted to make a level, <laughs> a level two room or a level, even a level three room. What I'm going to go ahead and do is kill some more mobs. Oh gosh, <laughs> they are everywhere. And, um, we're going to, not this episode, maybe the next episode, look into making a well of sacrifice. Okay, so let me go ahead and take this blank slate out here. I'm just going to put something, let's just put this backpack in here, something weird, so it doesn't uh, pull it out automatically. So I want to turn this level two rune, or blank, this uh, blank slate, I keep saying runes, level ones and level twos, but the blank slate, there's reinforced slate, there's imbued slate, there's all these different levels of slate um, that you need to make your... Um, your rear blood for blood magic to work let's see let's see oh also didn't show you okay so there's this um i'll show you about this uh seer of sight as well because i can see the progress of how this is going so right now 
it's uh, already gone to the next level. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this level up here just so I can again show you guys how this works. All right, so that's finished. Let me go ahead and grab this out of here. All right, uh, did it go in here? Yeah, always sneaking over there. All right, so we have an imbued slate, which I think is about the third level. Uh, excuse me, pardon me. I'm going to just smack you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put in our filter here that I, I want to change it to only pull out the imbued slate. So I'm going to put in our our stone back in our chest over here and you can load it up with however much stone you need uh, to make the tier 5 altar I'm going to need a lot of stone and um, a lot of runes so I'll you know I'll probably just make a lot of the uh, level 1 items here but just to show you how this works see it's turned into the uh, blank slate but it didn't pull it out this time hey there cheeky um, and the reason it didn't pull it out is because the filter is only going to allow it to pull out once it reaches the status of imbued slate. So let's see how we're doing on our status here. Okay, it's about 60% done on that one. I'm just going to keep killing mobs as they keep coming down here. So this should turn into, there it is. Now it's a reinforced slate. But again, it's not going to pull it out until it reaches the status of the imbued slate. So that's one way if you need it just to uh, kind of automate making a ton of runes. Because you need uh, different levels of runes to make all of these different items that I have here. Now I don't know if I showed last time, but I'm talking about the different runes. So I've got the rune of sacrifice, which increases the amount of blood that's... Um, being received from killing mobs so every time I kill a mob um, it gives you a certain amount of blood but with each one of these runes it increases it by I think 10 15 maybe 20 percent I'm not exactly sure but it does increase it on this side I've got the rune of capacity so initially your blood altar by default only holds 10,000 millibuckets but I've got enough runes on there where this now holds 28,000 buckets so that's um, you can increase it by however much you actually need, which you'll need to actually make um, the tier four, the master blood orb, which we're going to need to make. And I think we're going to make it this episode. Let me go ahead and take these stones out because I don't want to lose all the blood I have collected so far. Um, these last set of runes we talked about earlier, these are the displacement runes, which increases the speed at which blood goes gets pumped in and out of the altar. So actually, since I've got those displacement runes, I can probably, probably will want to consider increasing the amount are you dancing over there? <laughs> increasing the amount that's being pulled by the uh, fluid, fluid conduit pipes. So those are those runes that are set up. Now, one of the items that were, I'm going to just drop this in the chest over here, um, that we needed to make uh, per the book, because we're going by the achievements here. They wanted us to obtain a master blood orb. So let's uh, look and see what we actually need to make that master blood orb. And that is going to require a weak blood shard going through a tier 4 altar with at least 25,000 millibuckets of uh, blood. Now let's see, let's see, we know that this holds 28,000 and it looks pretty full. I'm just going to see how full it actually is by smacking these guys. Again, we're getting a lot of blood. Okay, so it's at least 90% full and we have 186,000, uh, kind of a a base set up over here so we need to get a weak blood shard and I know you guys remember the best way to get a weak blood shard is you take a, a bound blade which you've made before and you have to kill mobs with it to get that so let's shift right click and turn our bound blade into a bound blade now you hear the damage that it's doing that's because it's um it's it's damaging me because I don't have enough blood in my network and that's fine I've got great armor here so that little damage is not going to hurt very much so let's go ahead and just smack these guys around and see if we can get a well, okay well thank you creeper <laughs> let's see if we can get a, um, uh, a a weak what's it called one of those shards a weak blood shard okay come on guys so I have to go to the in uh, the nether to get um, the pigment again I hear you up there now the spiders kind of clog the hole. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> the spider has a lot of eyes there. So, yeah, so I've been ignoring the spiders because they um, they disappear over time. I think after thirty seconds. Oh, get back up there. There we go. 
So I'm just going to smack these guys around and hopefully I get a blood shard sometime soon. Like I said, if not, we'll just head on over to the nether and we got our pigmen, um, our pigmen hidey hole set up. All right, any day now. How much damage does this do? It does nine attack damage, not too bad, not great. So not to kill the creepers before they explode. Come on, I need one weak blood shard. One weak blood shard. We can make this uh, master blood orb any day now. Oh, there we go. Weak blood shard. Woohoo. All right. So we're going to take this weak blood shard. Oh, I can just leave it here. All right. So if I just pop it in here, it's going to start converting. You see the little particles around it. So they're converting over. And if we use our sear sigil, now while this is uh, doing its thing, I can show you about the sear sigil. Um, the sear sigil allows you to actually just see what's in the uh, blood altar a lot better. And you can see now the blood altar has lost a lot of blood. It's less than 70%. It's feeding in blood from our drum here directly into the blood altar. All right, the sear sigil <laughs> is... Um, it's just another, so we had this divination sigil before, uh, but the seer sigil, which is, where is it at? Seer sigil, there it is. Um, it's made using the alchemical array. It requires a site regent, and the site regent is created by you take your divination sigil in the, in the Hellfire Forge, two pieces of glass, and some glowstone. You'll need a demonic will with at least 64. So I think the petty demonic will is sufficient enough to be able to create this. So you take your site reagent, or regent, whichever one it is. You drop it into the chemical array, and then you put in your reinforced slate, and you get your seer signal. Sears sigil. <laughs> and the Sears sigil, oh, the Master Blood Orb is completed. Yay! Uh, let's go ahead and grab that out. So, and the Sears sigil, again, is, um, I guess it used to be called Sigil of Sight or something. Uh, you still have to have it in your hand. Like if I just, if I have it on my hot bar and I shift, I don't see anything. But if you have it in your hand and you hover over, you can see um, it says progression 3%. I don't know what that means. Um... Uh, I guess maybe it was doing something, I don't know. <laughs> but um, it shows you what's in what's in the blood altar, uh, the current capacity, and what I mentioned in the end is the current progress of whatever you're in the middle of converting over. So that is um, that is an update on what I've done on blood magic, and we can actually check this off in the book. Where did it go? Did it come over here? There it is, the Master Blood Orb. So we can go ahead and check that off in the book that we have obtained a Master Blood Orb. Uh, we also, let's go walk through this. We've used a rudimentary snare to obtain a demonic will. We've done that. Uh, we have crafted a brown, brown blade, but not the pickaxe, axe, and shovel yet. So we'll do that a little bit later. Automate LP, automate LP collection. I've kind of got, like I said, an automated system here, but I'm going to wait and um, we're going to work on this in the next episode. Is uh, There is a better way to get the blood into the system. Uh, like I said, I've got a pretty good setup here with the Cursed Earth, which is producing the mobs down here. However, we need to um, set it up where it'll kill them automatically, where I'm not even there. And that's done using the well... Um, it's the Well of Sacrifice. Let me go find that book. Ritual of <laughs> Well of Suffering or something like that. Uh, let's see. Saying that there's a book there. It's hiding from me. Uh, this is called... Uh, da -da -da. It was a... It's a ritual. And well of Suffering. So the book doesn't tell you too much about how to set it up. So I've got to look through that right now. Um, I remember that uh, before um, you have to have so many runes set up here. I went ahead and made a master rune. That is what you see here. And uh, it tells me that it's, right now it's deactivated. So I want to look and see what I need to do to activate the Ritual of Suffering. Because what that should do is um, any mobs that it finds within a certain radius of the actual altar, it'll kill them and put their LP into the altar. So that'll be a great automatic setup. And that, then I would consider it be automatically set up for the 
um, blood collection. All right, so the only other thing I wanted to show you, because I'm going to work on that in between episodes and come back in the next episode and we'll do that, is you can see I did increase our our big ball over here. We are now at a level, let's see, I think it's a tier 5 orb. Let me go ahead and deactivate this, because there's something that you can see that these crystal stabilizers they look a little bit different it's not just the four energy ones that were there before and the reasoning is do I have my ring on make sure yeah the reasoning is once you reach uh go above tier four tier five six seven and eight you're going to need these energy core stabilizers in this little pylon uh creation the way you get that and hopefully if I break this there we go. Okay. <laughs> did it give it to me? Yes, it did. Okay. So you need to have a three by three setup. So you're going to need to make a lot more of these energy core stabilizers. Once again, once you reach a level, a tier five, you just increase the amount of stabilizers that you have. So you're going to need nine for each side. And once you put that ninth one in, let's go ahead and do it. Oops. Shift. It turns into a pretty little circle here. Yay! <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys that we're still in the process of increasing these. Now, if we wanted to go up to the next little tier, I don't, th I think I've shown you this before, but I just wanted to um, just walk through the builder's guide here. Uh, as I get close, to, okay, let me actually. So I said the builder's guide, and if I want to go up to the next tier, uh, it shows you what you actually need. Now, one thing I've noticed is that. Um, it seems basically the internal parts are always redstone so I'm gonna always have to take out my current layer that because um, what's shown is what should be redstone now is shown as draconic blocks so you can always just vein mine as long as you have your magnet ring on <laughs> the, so you're gonna replace the next the inner tier here with redstone and then you're just gonna put the next layer as um, as um, draconium I wonder if I can go up to the next level to show me tier up yeah so tier seven it's again so all the internal ones it's all redstone on the inside and just the outside is just draconium so uh, I don't need as much as draconium as I was worried that I was actually gonna need it's actually just redstone which I've got a I think I got a redstone chicken and I'm getting a good chunk of redstone in for my sieving system here um, let's see the max level tier eight Whoa, that's a big one. <laughs> now the tier eight is going to require awakened draconium around everything. So that's going to be a long way away. Uh, again, as you can see, we need redstone all the way in. Uh, then we're going to have, see the redstone. Yes, redstone all the way in, it looks like. And then draconium. And then draconium. Oh, so maybe once it is draconium at some point, it is uh, all awakened draconium at the end. So we got a long way to go before we get there. Let's go ahead and reactivate this. Go back down to our tier five. Activate. And you can see the tier five holds up to 59 billion RF. I've currently got 15 billion RF in here. Uh, my, um, I should have been generating uh, 25,000 RF per tick. I thought I was. Oh, yeah, because we've got to feed in the rest of those items that's going over there. So we've got a pretty good chunk of power. Still a way to go to fill this item up. Uh, tier 8 is the goal, but we need a lot of Awakened Draconium, which means we need a lot more Dragon Hearts for uh, that bad boy. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end the episode for now. Um, let me turn this blade off. It's still trying to get my blood out of there uh, I would like to thank you guys for watching the episode if you're new to my channel please go ahead and click that subscribe button I'm getting more subscribers you guys are awesome uh, if you have any tips tricks techniques questions comments concerns or just want to say hi leave a comment down below I try to reply back to everybody as often as I can uh, your comments are greatly appreciated your support is just awesome I'm just so glad to <laughs> that you guys are enjoying this series um, Okay, and if you have any, uh, is there are particular mods that you want me to go over. I know that I had a comment from Night Wrath about something that he wasn't didn't wasn't aware of in Matania uh, regarding an overgrowth seed, but I may talk about that once we get to Gaia too because she drops that supposedly. 
so <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about that but if there's any uh, any other questions you guys want to know about this series um about the different mods and then what i'm learning about if you want to know what this tree is for <laughs> send me a comment and i'll tell you what i'm doing with that tree right now doing nothing i really don't know but um again <laughs> thank you guys for watching if you have any questions leave a comment but i think that's it for now so until next time next time guys i will talk to you later bye